You watch. And yes, it is the very right Reverend the late Glenn Henderson. It's Monday, 25th of April. It's your John Lavinia Success Mastermind. I am sort of your host. <laughs> and, and I must offer my most sincerest most humble, like punch myself in the faciest thanks to Mr. Stuart Wilde for holding down the fort until I was very cheerfully and politely reminded that, uh, and it, you know, here's what happened. Stuart sent me a little text and uh, he says, hey buddy, where you at? I said, hey, I'm in good shape, man. How about you? Doing great. <laughs> Right? I thought it was a conversation. I, th I thought he was actually reaching out just because he wanted to connect with an old friend. <laughs> and then he says, oh, right, I'm sorry. I thought you were hosting today. I'm just holding down the fort until. Ah! Well, see, here's what's going on. And, and I am very purposefully and shamefully using this as a lame and weak excuse for why I was late to the call today. You understand? Lame and weak excuse. Paul and I are streamlining. We're uh, in the process of canceling subscriptions and paying stuff off and carrying this cabinet over to Goodwill and bringing furniture back from the office that I no longer need. And things, you know what I mean? Things of this. You, you want to know how extreme this is? I, um, as you, some of you all know, I have been uh, a collector and a, sort of an avid collector of watches. Apple Watch, pretty simple today. But I like watches. It's, you know, it's my thing. Now, I don't spend like a billion dollars per watch, but I'll, I've always bought one, ones that I like. Um, until I realized that some of the money that I'd spent on watches that I thought liked and thought were really great was turned out to be wasted money because those, um, those watches have the approximate durability of paper mache in a rainstorm. So um, I got rid of, by a variety of means, Goodwill, Facebook Marketplace, and the bin. You see what I did there, Mindy? Gail? The bin. I binned a couple of watches. Just got rid of, because, you know, why should I keep blowing money? Because I had paid for these watches over and over again. Repairs, battery every couple of months. I mean, what, what reputable watch needs a battery every couple of months? Anyway, so we're streamlining. Um... <clears throat> I had a rent. I had been uh, leasing an office in a, uh, one of those co-working spaces, not far from the house, just a couple of minutes drive. Part of the reason was when we moved into this new house, we realized that we maybe didn't have quite as much space as we thought, as in working space, as in the room that you could dedicate for an office and so forth. So we, um, I leased this space, and now we've, with all this streamlining that we're doing at home. We have space. So I'm bringing the office back into the house, which is pretty groovy. Um, and it's, it's, been, it's been interesting to me. There's been a number of things that I've purged over the past few months. Uh, not just things, objects, possessions, but activities, subscriptions to things, enrollments in this or that program or training thing or whatever it was. And in some cases, I have streamlined relationships. Ooh, what? Purged relationships? Yeah, as a matter of fact, I have purged in the past few months several relationships which uh, may have begun some time ago with the very best of intentions and for the very noblest of purposes and which I now come to realize is serving neither of the parties to the relationship. It's not just, hey, my relationship with you doesn't serve me. Hit the road, Jack. 
that's just selfish, right? There are some people that I know uh, and are friends with whom I have offered, let us say, significant levels of help, counseling, assistance, coaching, whatever, over the past few years. Was it, were these relationships serving me, air fingers quotes? I don't know. Uh, depends on how you define serving me. If serving me means that I derive a great deal of satisfaction and enjoyment from helping somebody get a little closer to achieving their goals, then yeah. If you, if you define serving me by am I getting paid, or am I getting new business, new referrals, am this person doing for me, then admit some of these cases, no. There was only what our friend John Lavenia likes to refer to as the psychic pay of assisting someone else with moving forward in their life. Now you all know what I'm talking about. You help somebody and you knew good and well it wasn't going to do you or your business or your bank account or uh, anything a bit of good and you did it anyway and you felt good about doing it because you knew that you were doing for someone else. You're helping, you're helping a friend. You're helping somebody move forward. Psychic pay. So there's that. Um, but the point I'm making is I thought in a lot of cases that the the change in the net in the status of relationships and so forth, particularly personal relationships, I thought there would be a remorse, more remorse, more regret on my side because, you know, how can you be so selfish as to just, you know, not want to associate with someone anymore? How can you just not help them? Isn't that sort of selfish of you, Len? Uh, or you're really going to miss that watch. That's, that was, you really, remember those circumstances when you bought that, you were on that trip and you're talking to the person and, it, right? Yeah, and then you, it, that watch used to remind you of a really good time. And you, but uh, you know what I noticed? And you know what I am noticing? Very little in the way of remorse. Very little in the way of regrets or second thoughts or, oh, did I make the right decision? Did I really need to close out the lease on the old office? I mean, it's a really nice office, you know, and it's very cool and you get a little privacy. And... Two things. Two comments uh, about why did I feel no remorse? Why am I not feeling second thoughts or anything like this? I had an old friend named Mickey Hamlet that I knew from back in the, my earliest days in business uh, who used to say, Mickey Hamlet used to say, I never make a right decision. Now this was a man who, who had built huge business, businesses, business organizations that made millions of dollars. I never make a right decision. What? He says, yeah, I make a decision and then I work at it. I stick to it. I stand by it and I make it a right decision. Okay, that's a whole different way of looking at it. And it doesn't that take the pressure off even just a little bit of, oh, what if I, what if I pick this and, and it doesn't work out? Or what if I do that and I'm wrong? Or what if I sign up here and I don't make any money? You know, what if, what if I do something and the result isn't what I'm hoping for? So what? Conor McGregor. I don't know how many of you know much about mixed martial arts, the UFC fighting. Conor McGregor is the biggest star in the history of the sport of mixed martial arts. He's won championships. He's thrilled, all he, thrilled crowds around the world, made multiple millions of dollars doing what he does, uh, which, by the way, his main job is spending 25 minutes getting punched in the face in a, in a cage with eight sides, the octagon. So anyway, but he's a champion. Conor McGregor said something, and this is going back to that question like, what if I choose this and it doesn't work out? What if I buy this and I don't make the money back? What if, right? What if I do this and turns out he should have done that? 
Conor McGregor said something. Never forget it. He said uh, about him and his team, his training team. He says, we never lose. Like even if, matter of fact, I actually saw him get defeated in a fight once. And in the interview, come, how do you feel? You know, uh, you know got to be disappointing to lose. And Conor said, we never lose. What? He says, we never lose. We either win or we learn. So, from this perspective, there's really no such thing as an ultimate loss, where as in all is lost, as if I can, as in I can never get it back. You either win or you learn a lesson that you carry into the next encounter or the next venture. Uh, Top Gun. I'm just so full of these movie things. It makes me sound like really smart and cultured and sophisticated. But anyway, uh, Top Gun, the original Tom Cruise movie, there's a line in there where one of the commanders says, a good pilot, this is after a terrible accident, someone lost their life. He says, a good pilot is required to evaluate what's happened so he can apply what he's learned. All of this comes back to we never really ultimately lose. We either win or we learn. So that's the first thing. Make a decision and make it a right decision. In other words, decide to get rid of that thing, that program, that seminar, that whatever it is, that relationship that's no longer serving you, that's no longer trending and moving in the direction you want it to move. It's perfectly okay to let go of stuff. The other thing that, that, that I thought of is when we do <laughs> that shutter stock, yeah. You know, there are business tools that I signed up for five and six years ago that have been completely superseded by newer, more efficient, better working stuff that I'm using now, but I just never got around to going back and canceling the old subscription. And the wife says to me the other day, honey, you gotta go and look at the credit card receipts. We're blowing a couple of hundred bucks a month on stuff that you, what? Oh, thanks for the reminder. Let's go, let's get this stuff cleaned up. In fact, I think it ought to be a quarterly ritual a quarterly practice for us to go through the credit card receipts, go through the bank, and that's just, and that's just one aspect of finding stuff that's just hanging around that you don't need anymore, not using anymore, just weighing you down, either financially or emotionally or mentally or some other such thing. Go, let's go through, can we, can we make an agreement? Every couple of months, I'm gonna go through my stuff, even if things are going great, even if things are looking good. Every few months, let's say with the change of seasons, right? I'm just gonna go through my stuff. Go through the boxes, go through the files in the office. Uh, okay, what's working? Great, put that back in the file, keep that. What's not working? Out it goes. And by the way, I uh, try my best to apply the same kind of reasoning to uh, this as I apply to um, prospecting, business prospecting for new potential customers, potential business partners. When I talk with somebody on the phone and they've come to me through uh, some lead generation service or something like that, you know, where we're just meeting for the first time and I, you could call it a cold call, let's say. Do you know how you know what my mindset is, my attitude while I'm on the phone with that person? I am looking for an excuse to disqualify you from this potential opportunity, this potential business partnership, or whatever it might be. I'm looking not because I don't like you, but because I ain't got no time to waste. I don't have time to waste trying to convince someone that it would, might be a good idea for them to do something to help improve their life. If I need to convince you of that, 
how hard am I going to have to continue to push this rock up the Sisyphean hill to continue to try to convince you, hey, come on, man, be motivated. Hey, come on, man, get fired up. Hey, come on, let's go to work. Let's do some work. <sighs> really? So as I'm going through the boxes, and may I suggest this, as we go through our stuff every few months, any piece of paper, be looking for an excuse to get rid of that sucker. Be looking for a reason to cancel that subscription. Has this subscription to this service or this program, has it done for me in the past 60 days any percentage of what I was expecting? No? You're out of there. Um, it's really been sort of refreshing and continues to be sort of refreshing to me to get rid of stuff I don't need. We don't need, yes, Stuart, physical and mental, and might I add, financial spring cleaning. Do you know I feel five pounds lighter? It's, it's an enormous weight off your mind to get rid of stuff that isn't working. And, you, and, and we never need feel the slightest remorse or regret or second thoughts for Purging from our life things that aren't working, even relationships, whether personal or business or otherwise. There's no shame, as the poker players say, like to say, there is no shame in folding. Get rid of it. And you know, the other thing that I'm noticing, this is what I was going to say. The other thing that I'm noticing about purging, <clears throat> purging your house, purging your business, excuse me, time for a little energy shot, pardon me. Anyway, um, purging, streamlining your life, it adheres to one of the laws of thermodynamics. What? One of the laws of physics. It, 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 here, here's, the, here's the law. Nature abhors a vacuum. What's that mean? You suck all the air out of a room, sooner or later, something else is going to come in and replace that air. Whether it's more air or a hole in the side of the boat, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Nature abhors a vacuum. And this works not just in the physical realm, but also in the realm of, let us say, infinite intelligence. We've done a book study on uh, <clears throat> the science of getting rich. And we, therefore, we know that there is a thinking stuff of which the universe is made. And humankind, we people can, by virtue of our thoughts, impress upon that thinking stuff and form it into the things and situations that we desire. And by our grat attitude of gratitude, thankfulness, can begin to attract those things to us. So what am I saying with all of this? Getting rid of the junk, getting rid of the garbage in my life is creating a space into which good is now flowing. Really, all sorts of, all, all sorts of, thank you, Lindsay, the formless substance of the universe. It's the, 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 the things that are coming my way i've been offered tremendous uh, a number of tremendous opportunities and things and you know some of them i'm still thinking about and others are starting and going pretty well um we create opportunities for ourselves sometimes in some cases simply by creating the space for those opportunities to show up. And it, 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 it seems funny, but some of the things that I've been offered over the past few months have come seemingly, seemingly, out of the blue. Out of nowhere, left field. Where the heck did this opportunity come from? I wasn't, I wasn't asking the universe, for, I wasn't even thinking about this. Well, guess what? You kind of were, because it showed up. 
<laughs> and so in my case, it was the realization that this particular venture, this particular opportunity that came along, it didn't come because I was looking for that particular thing, but I had been impressing upon the universe my desire for greater opportunities, greater and more fruitful and productive opportunities. And as the old saying goes, to paraphrase the old book, we may not reap when we sow, we may not reap where we sow, but we will always and each and every time reap what we sow. So when you, when you do good, when you do the right thing, when the wrong thing is easy and also invisible, hey, no one's going to find out. It's just me. No one's looking. When you do the right thing, when you do good for other people, the universe is paying attention. And what you sowed, you will reap every time. Maybe not in the time or place you might have expected, but every time. It really is interesting how things, isn't that something, Gail, you and Janet, just not recently talking about cleaning stuff out? This morning. <laughs> great minds, great minds think alike. At the beginning of the session, Glenn. Uh, yeah, well, see, yeah, if the late Glenn Henderson had showed up when he's supposed to show up, he would have picked up on that thread of the conversation. Hey, I, I'm already hearing what I'm already hearing what you, Stuart. You got to lay this on me, brother. Ether, the quintessence, the fifth element. Um, so you were talking about the thinking stuff of the universe, right? And the formless, and then Lindsay. Uh, mm -hmm. also uh, dropped a, a, a little chat about that, but, you know, um, the, the, um, the intangible essence of the universe that is uh, formed out of our, uh, out of our thoughts and out of our vibrations, right? And, mm. and ancient, the ancient alchemists uh, called it the aether or the ether, right? And so the fifth element, right? You've got uh, uh, earth, air, fire, water, um, and then the fifth element, which is the the Ether. invisible, the quintessence, the mm. thing, the stuff that the universe is formed out of, is is the is called the the aether um, or the ether. And if you remember, we we've talked quite a bit about you know mm. uh, manifesting things out of the ethers, right? And that's really where that uh, where that saying comes from. Yeah, uh, and this is why the, you point out so well. Stuart, why it is <clears throat> that it's really, it's really uh, not only negative, but quite unproductive to complain about opportunities that didn't go our way or to be bitter about past mistakes and errors and that sort of thing. It's, it's unproductive because it doesn't form the universe in the way that we said we wanted. I mean, ultimately, we all get pretty much what we picture. Uh, there was another one. <clears throat> we don't get what we want. We get what we picture. Now, I be, anyway, we'll get, not get into that. The whole, the whole idea of what I've been chatting with what we've been chatting about here is just to review never be afraid to let go of stuff that isn't working I don't know John may have talked about this recently as well but it's just been um, Im impressed upon me the past couple of weeks as we've been sort of divesting ourselves of things and situations and in some cases relationships that didn't serve any were no longer serving anyone um, never be afraid to let go and as a matter of fact not only never be afraid to let go of what isn't working look for reasons to get to let go of what isn't working because what you're really doing is opening the space in your world for the gold for what is truly meant to be for you. Listen, you all, thank you all so much again for putting up with my 
tardiness. <laughs> and, and again, thanks to Stuart for carrying on a brilliant conversation. I'm absolutely certain it was before uh, I showed up. And so Kat and Gail, Daisy never misses. Has anyone ever seen Daisy miss a session ever? She misses nothing. It's great. Edward holding down the fort. My man. Stuart Wilde and Mandy. We've got uh, books for Britain. This, no, that's Wednesday. So, uh, and uh, the money mama. Nice to see you as always, Lindsay. My friends, um, I, uh, I swear to you on a stack of Glenn Henderson books, I will be on time for our Wednesday gen sesh. Have a great one. Bye for now.